I'm a project from the projects who's about to present a project to a group of students in Northwest DC, armed with the support and the love of my director, we embark on a journey on an unmarked path. I sit down with six of my teenagers and I tell them I have this idea. We've been writing poetry to hip hop, we've been writing poetry to R&B, so now we're gonna make our own hip hop album. Tim, I ain't nobody's rapper, you need to stop says Tia, who was the first lady of our program at the time. See, this is the problem. They keep bringing people to Martha's table from New York. This is not New York, <laughs> says Reggie. And so, after I dodged those comments, I still stand my ground. Listen, we all tell stories here. We all listen to hip hop. We have a story, and it deserves to be told. If you trust me, just like some of y'all didn't want to write poetry, we're going to make this hip hop album. So I got some that are in the middle. I got Michael, I got Tony. They are MCs, if only in their own mind at the moment. And they are like, yo, let's make this happen. So we get past that hurdle. So then I explain to them, OK, the way we're going to do this hip hop album, you cannot curse. What? See, no, you don't know where we from. Listen, Joe, because in DC, everybody's name is Joe or Mo. <laughs> if we're going to make hip hop, we got to come from the heart. And from the heart, you know, that's just, how, that's just how we express ourselves and this, that, and the other. I said, listen, it's one thing to speak. It's another thing to have people listen, but yet another thing for you to be heard. And as soon as you start cursing, they're going to pay attention to how you're speaking, and they're not going to listen to what you have to say. So we're not going to go through this process without being heard. So we are going to do this without cursing. OK, if you say so, we're going to trust you. So that was big. So we start writing. And so I told them, when it comes to writing, do not let your rhyme lead your content. Let your content lead your rhyme. And so we started writing five, six months because we had to learn how to properly write and get the emotions across and not curse. So it took five or six months. This is after school. We didn't have to worry about the DC cast, so we was good to go. So now we did our pre-production, my partner, she had studio session lined up for us. I had a partner, he was giving us the beats. We go in, first time we're in a professional recording studio. Michael, our resident MC, he's going first, because I'm like, okay, I get my lineup right, get my best one up there, that's gonna make everybody come along. So he's in there, everything is going great. First verse, boom, knocks it out, get the chorus. My man is in there, the beat is banging, so nothing is like hearing hip hop through headphones in a studio. So, you know, it's -nan 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 -nan. we rocking. <laughs> Boom, all right, Michael, let's get this second verse. Turns the paper over. Tim, I, I don't have my verse. <sighs> now, I wanted to curse, and I was telling them we gotta write this album without cursing. So for a moment, a moment, I panicked. But I said, OK, we got to get this done. So I tell my partner, L, who made the track and is running the session, I'm going to go in the booth, and I'm going to put the headphones on, just play the track, and punch me in. So he's from Brooklyn like me. And yo, son, don't, don't even do this. Like, yo, I don't even know that you rhyme like that. I'm like, yo, L, I got it. Let's go. <laughs> So, you know, hip hop, fake it till you make it. So I go in, put the headphones on, so he punches me in. Look around, can't be found. In other words, I gotta make it. People around the world trying to constantly fake it, trying to hold us down, trying to judge us by our color. But I'm gonna be Columbus, flip the verse and just discover silence. But it was that good silence. Broken by my man, hey, yo, son. 
you sound like Nas. <laughs> so that was my Grammy moment. So that moment literally catapulted us forward and we were able to get the album done. And so we're producing songs where we have Billy talking about losing his dad. We have Reggie talking about can the neighborhood that once held him down be a springboard to move him forward. We got Tia writing a song where she's saying a prayer for God to forgive her father and let him have a good life despite him not being there for her. We had Tony and Michael asking, am I free when you get accused of looking like a suspect because you're black? And so we had to put all this heavy content but still make it rhyme. So we get the album done. And so then my partner came with a great surprise and she was like, listen, we're gonna do this CD release party and we're gonna do it at the Woolly Mammoth Theater. Where's that? 14th and Church, just right up the street. Now remember, this is pre-gentrified DC. <laughs> so, you know, my, my team, they are 14th and V going up to Clifton Terrace. Woolly Mammoth is 14th and Church. Might as well have been on the east and the west coast. So, we work, we perfect, we get in there. They get treated like rock stars. You're in a theater similar to this with people that are different ages, different races, ethnicities, and they're all positioned to listen. And we rocked it. We rocked it. We really rocked it. And so we did our thing. And they presented their songs. And the girls went and the guys went. And so we ended. And it went like this. If you want to know what makes the earth turn and swirl, just take a trip and come to my world, to my world, to my world. When the world thinks about my students, too often they see caricatures of pity. Metaphors of misery that can do nothing for themselves. But every day I see resilience. I see boys and girls turn into young men and women right in front of my face. I see students who walk to school on street corners where policemen can make them feel more terror than talent, but they still show up for tutoring at 6.30 in the morning. So often we focus so much on the quicksand that we fail to see what has refused to drown. So when you think about my kids, don't just think about what holds them down. Think about how they overcome it every day. Think of Janiya, who turns my classroom into a coliseum. Every word she speaks coded in creativity. Her poetry would have brought Homer to his feet. Think of Anna, who became an honor roll student when the world wanted to free and reduce lunch to find her. She is more than a form. She is more than a number. Think of Chris, who has been working every day since he was 13. That money helps his mother keep the lights on so that their world isn't covered in darkness. My students have turned my classroom into a symphony of second chances. Every day we write to right the wrongs that have been done to communities that never had a choice. We read to learn how to tell our own stories because no one can define who we are if we are the ones holding the dictionary. So don't tell me my kids aren't brilliant. Don't tell me that they aren't walking miracle. My students have taught me how to relearn every part of me. I carry their stories like a back pocket full of prayer and I leave my classroom a better person every day so when we speak of them, let us speak of humanity. Let us speak of perseverance. Let us speak of how funny they are. Let us speak of how courageous they are. Let us not focus so much on the shadow that we failed to see what stands above it. Let us celebrate the best of our students as we would want anyone to celebrate the best of us. <laughs> 